Hello and welcome. Thanks for taking time to view this brief presentation on balance training and navigating the doctor-patient relationship. I'm Don Neese. I'm a past president of the American Balance Society and the International Balance Federation. I'm a credentialed balance leader and supervisor, and I'm currently a professor in the Department of Family Medicine at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus. So why balance groups? Well, medicine and medical practice is based on science, but the practice of medicine is really interpersonal. It's about relationships. And these encounters that we have with patients often stimulate reactions, thoughts, feelings, dilemmas, because patients, they often bring in more than their textbook symptoms when they come into the exam room or into our offices. And the process of medical education can also expose students to interpersonal encounters with professors, teachers, other professionals, and expectations that can stimulate similar kinds of reactions. And oftentimes there's not an opportunity to process and understand those. Over time, those reactions can start to wear you down. It can make you wonder why you became a doctor, why you decided to do this, and bring up stuff about your own personal values and are those in alignment with what you're seeing. And it can take the joy out of your chosen profession. Or as an alternative, you can bring this stuff to a balance group. In a safe balance group, you can share, explore, Use these reactions to better understand, diagnose, and treat your patient and what's going on in your educational encounters. This can make you a better doctor. It can make you more able to navigate the doctor-patient relationship and thereby increase your resilience and enjoyment of practicing medicine. And at the same time, you can have a chance to learn from fellow students all over the country. So how does a balance group work? Well, a balance group is really just a group of clinicians, often physicians or medical trainees, who meet regularly to present cases, generally clinical cases, in order to improve and better understand what's going on in that encounter, or as we call it, the clinician-patient relationship. Balance groups can provide a safe and confidential opportunity to share also with students all over the country in a virtual format, uh, your common and unique reactions to patients and medical education, and learn to better navigate the doctor-patient relationship at the core of any specialty of medicine you may one day practice. The nuts and bolts are that a balance group session begins with a member presenting a case for the group to discuss. The group learns about the patient and the relationship through that presenter's story and about how the encounter or the relationship seemed to that presenting clinician. We don't use notes. We don't use bring in lab values, try to avoid a lot of technical jargon, but it's more about describing the interaction and the feelings that may have come up in the presenter, um, describing the patient and maybe the patient's reaction to what's going on in the encounter and their doctor. Well, clinicians and physicians are usually trained to seek the one right answer to medical problems. In a balance group, the focus is on broadening uh, our ability to think about and connect with and care for a patient. So enhancing that ability. The discussion is facilitated by trained leaders, but in large part, these are student to student discussions. And during the facilitated discussion, the group members will uncover different and new perceptions about the patient and the clinician's experience with each other. The focus is really on trying to understand how they're impacting one another, thoughts and feelings, and what that might have to do with what the patient's bringing as their medical problem. In other words, what's really going on in the room and how to use that as a diagnostic and therapeutic tool. The success of the group really depends on its members' ability to be honest, respectful, and supportive of 
just about anything that might come up. So divergent opinions. And most importantly, everything that goes on in the group is confidential. Now, it's also important to understand what a balanced group isn't or what it's not. This is not about therapy. Um, you may learn about your professional self and your blind spots or reactions, allergies you might have to certain patients and their presenting problems. But uh, the focus is on emotions. So knowing what your local support resources are if needed is important. It's also not a support group, but most of us that have been a part of balance groups know that these are can be very supportive in their nature. Because when you unload about a troubling patient or encounter that might have happened in an educational space, that can be very supportive. And finally, it's not a consultation group about medical knowledge. It's not kind of a grand round sort of thing where um, those facts come into play. Participating in a balanced group can develop a lot of really important skills for clinicians, physicians, residents, and medical students. And these are just a few of these. Listening and communicating more effectively, learning how to respond compassionately um, and empathically to patients that are suffering, developing more flexibility and relating to different kinds of patients, navigating difficult clinical encounters, learning how to identify and respond to patients' thoughts and emotions, how to identify and use your own thoughts and reactions and feelings to better understand what's going on in a clinical encounter, and help you get to know each individual patient as a unique person in their own social context. And again, these skills that you learn in balance groups really can help you recover that joy in your practice, in your work, building resilience and professional satisfaction. So after hearing this, if you're interested in trying it, there's some easy next steps. If you can commit to four one-hour group meetings via Zoom during the fall semester, most likely during your noon hour, we'd like for you to complete and submit a simple application to be accepted into a group. You can indicate on your application if you wanna be a student liaison for that group, and we'll inform you of your acceptance and the dates of time of, times of your group meetings via email. If you'd like to learn from students who have participated in balance groups, you can go to this link um, from Washington State University in Spokane, where students have been participants in groups. And I'd also encourage you to check out the resources and information at our American Balance Society's website at AmericanBalanceSociety.org. Thanks for your time and watching this presentation, and I hope we can see you in a student group soon.